today's video is on Axiom Gel Manicure Removal. Um, Axiom is the first gel polish that came out. They came in the little tubs and they're really, really thick. And it's Judy's favorite brand. There's lots of different brands and we use three of them in my salon and Judy prefers this one. So you just saw me use hand sanitizer to sanitize Judy's hands. You're supposed to sanitize your client's hands and your hands before every nail service. So now we're going to start the removal process. Now the Axiom was a little bit trickier gel polish to get off the client's nails. So we have to file the top of it a little bit, but you have to be really careful not to file through the polish and hit the client's nails. So if you watch me really closely, I'm only filing in one direction. I file a tiny bit in one direction and I lift the fingernail file off the nail before I make another stroke. And each time I'm only removing a tiny bit and I want to make sure that I'm not going all the way down to her nail. So you're going to see me file the first five fingernails and then I'm going to stop, saturate cotton with pure acetone, sit it on the nail plate, wrap it with a little tiny piece of foil, and then I'm going to move on to the next hand. We want, we want to give the first hand as much time as possible to start soaking, so by the time we get back to it, it's all ready to scrape off. So now we've got the first hand wrapped, we're going to move on to the second hand and in addition to filing the tops of the nails to break up the polish so the acetone can soak down into the gel and break it up so it can get scraped off really easily, we're going to shorten the nails with the fingernail polish on. This saves us lots of time and allows that opposite hand to be soaking for just a couple minutes longer. So whenever I shorten someone's nails, I always try to make sure that I make the same amount of strokes when I'm shortening their nail. I go straight across the top to take down the length, and then after the length has been taken down, I go to the right side, and then I go to the left side to make sure that the nail is symmetrical. Judy likes her nails rounded. so. You shorten it a tiny bit, go to the right, go to the left, look at it, make sure it's nice and even. So 
So you can see how easy the back part of the nail comes off. It's been soaking for long enough, pops right off the nail plate. The tip of the nail is always the pain in the butt. I don't know why, for some reason it just is with this type of gel. That's why when I file the nail, I always try to make sure that that top polish coat is filed thin enough that the acetone can break through it. You'll notice that Judy's nails have some white spots on it. That's just some dehydration from the acetone. Her nails are not thinned out at all. She's been having this Axiom Gel Polish put on her nails for about five years now. They're long, strong, they're in great shape. When you're using the cuticle pusher to pull the polish off the nail plate, you're not digging at the nail plate. You're just scraping the polish off the nail plate. And I also go along the back cuticle and push that cuticle back a little bit so we're prepping it for reapplication. So now we're going to shorten this hand so the other hand has a couple of more minutes to soak with the acetone on them. So we're going to take down the length and then go from side to side to make sure they're symmetrical. Next we're going to use a 240 grit buffer block. You're going to buff the new growth near the cuticle. You're going to get any little bit of trigium that's on the nail plate off. You're going to buff around the free edge to make sure there isn't any rough spots from shortening and rounding the nails. And you're going to lightly go over the entire nail plate just to make sure any old product is removed.
I'm just drying the barbicide off of my nippers. They just came out of my wet sanitizer because I don't want to get the nail plate wet. I don't want it to retain any of the barbicide. And I need to trim a few little hangnails that are on the sides of her nails. You'll see on this nail I'm going around the cuticle area really carefully because she does have a little bit of visible skin adhered to the base of the nail right at the cuticle and I'm very very lightly just glancing over it to file it off the nail plate because if you leave any of that skin on the nail plate the gel is going to adhere to the skin and not to the nail and their nails are going to lift right off. I mean the polish is going to lift off the nail, the nail isn't going to lift off. So Judy had a crack in her nail about a month ago and we put a small patch of acrylic on it and it survived the last soak off and finally this soak off the nail has grown out enough where I shortened the crack off and I'm just going, I'm feeling because it's rough and I'm, I'm just taking my file, I'm using a 180 grit file and just lightly filing down that last little bit of acrylic that's left on the nail plate till it's nice and smooth. So now you're going to take your cuticle brush, your nail brush, you're going to dust off all the nails really, really good, getting down into all the cracks and crevices because you can't have any debris left on the nail plate before you apply the gel polish. After we get off all of the dust, I'm going to take a lint-free wipe which, by the way, really are not lint-free because you will still find occasionally stuff stuck to the nail if there's any snags any place. But once you get the nail wet with some base coat, you'll see any little weird pieces of debris and you'll be able to pull them off. But it's way better than cotton. Don't use cotton on someone's nails before you put gel on them. It just gets all over the place and you're constantly pulling cotton off the nail. It's super annoying. So I use a lint-free wipe and you use acetone and you're just going to clean off the nail plate really well and I go over it a couple of times. Okay, so you're gonna watch me applying this base coat on Judy's left hand, and you're gonna think, what in the world is she doing? Because you can't, this isn't a really good vantage point, but when you're applying base coat, you can't just sit it on and pull it forward 
like you do with regular polish because it's super thick and you have to apply it super super thin and if you try to get close to the cuticle it just it's too much so I go in like little teeny tiny circles to get it as close to the um, nail wall as I possibly can without touching the skin and then you'll see me like scooting the brush a little bit and pulling it forward but I'm literally like it's just transfer from the brush to the nail plate there is no width in between the bristles and the nail plate you're letting the brush with the product touch the nail and then you're pulling it right back off so you do not want any kind of thickness of that base coat on the nail. It's super, super thin. For this brand of gel, you have to cure it in a UV light for two minutes. So while that hand is curing, you're going to start on the application of the base coat on the opposite hand. So over the years, there's been a lot of education on polish and gel polish and I've watched tons and tons of videos on YouTube with people polishing nails and never, ever in my 23 years of being a professional nail technician have I ever capped the free edge of a nail plate. It's just not necessary and when I've had people insist that I do it, they're polished chips immediately and I'll tell you the reason why I believe that happens is because the width of a nail it's non-existent it's like a millimeter thick there's nothing to hold on to it and as soon as you touch it to something it's gonna separate it's gonna pull away and it's attached to the rest of the polish on the nail so it's gonna it's gonna chip so just don't do it you don't need to do it So you'll notice when I'm applying the color for this gel, I'm going to be doing the same application process as I did for the base coat. I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the nail walls, as close as I can to the cuticle, and it's hard not to get it all over the skin. So you've got to go slow, you've got to be careful around the edges. Once you get your edges done, then you can... Um, you know refine it do another stroke or two down the nail plate so you can get good coverage on the whole thing but again you're trying to make it as thin as possible and the second coat is going to be just as thin but it's going to look wonderful and just like polish and it's going to stay on for three four weeks at a time
So here you're going to notice that I'm using my thumb to pull the skin away from the nail wall so I can get closer in there. And sometimes you just have to do that. You can't, you can't think that you're going to get close to the edges without having to move the sides of the skin. And you, you kind of just pinch, um, pinch the finger and it, it pulls the skin right down and around so you can get right down in those grooves. Okay, so this is a crazy phenomenon that happens so many times a day. I have no idea why, but I want you to watch Judy's knuckle on her index finger. Her hand was flat and then all of a sudden she starts to twist her hand and it changes the whole position of the hand and you just cannot get to the sides of the nail. So I had to tell her to drop her knuckle back down so her hand would stay flat. So something that I haven't talked about yet is how I balance my pinky finger on the middle finger of my opposite hand. This is the only way that you can steady yourself to be able to do a great job when you're doing somebody's nails. There is no way you can possibly hover over somebody's hand holding a polish brush and stay steady and even pressure and, and all of that. So. Practice holding the finger and resting your pinky finger of your applicating hand on the middle finger like you see here in these frames. Okay, so we have our two coats of polish on the nails, and this gel system stopped making their top coat, so I'm using another brand's top coat, and it uses an LED light. So you'll see me put the top coat on, and then I'm going to bring out another light and put it on the table um, for her to put her hand into to cure. And then we're going to switch and do the other side.
Okay, so we have our two coats of polish on the nails, and this gel system stopped making their top coat, so I'm using another brand's top coat, and it uses an LED light. So you'll see me put the top coat on, and then I'm going to bring out another light and put it on the table um, for her to put her hand into to cure. And then we're going to switch and do the other side.
after the top coat has cured it leaves this little oily residue on top of the surface you have to take a lint-free wipe with alcohol and rub the top of it or everything they touch just sticks to the fingernail and then put a little bit of cuticle oil around their cuticles and a little bit of lotion and a hand massage and they're all done Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and please subscribe to my channel so you can be notified for the next video I upload. Have a great night!